This week on 4 Drive TV, we feature the start of the ARB LD Easter event. We've got tech tips on simple solar solutions, I squeeze some extra clearance out of our lifted Colorado 7, and we look at the telltale signs of 4x4 clutch problems. I'm Simon Christie, let's hit some tracks. Fred Lightly, keep it safe, play hard. Hi, I'm Matt Frost from ARB and welcome to the ARB LD Easter event. It's about the 10th time I've been to this particular station here up at LD and it really is a magnificent location. From a geographical point of view, it's about 50 odd kilometres north of Broken Hill, so it's fairly easy to get here with a sealed road most of the way up here. Well, the scenery here is absolutely stunning. We've got the barrier ranges here behind us and then you look out onto the Mundy Mundy Plains. It really is a sensational location and of course that sort of terrain, particularly up in the hills, really does provide some outstanding opportunities for some great full driving. Okay, go forward and you've got to get your rear left wheel onto it, okay? And then sweep past the gate and stop onto the back of the car. Hi, David Brickhill from Kmart 4-Wheel Drive and here we are once again at LD Station Family Event. This is the third year it's been running and it's been an absolute success once again. G'day, Andrew from DP Chip here. It's great to be uh, out here at the LD Easter Event. I wasn't able to get out here last year and we're glad to be back here sponsoring and actually here physically. Hello and welcome to the ARB LD Easter Event for 2013. Over the next two days, Simon Christie's planned out 15 or 16 events. We've got a good mixture from sand to a bit of water, up in the hills, out on the plain, out in a big flat, about 10,000 acre paddock, and around all the sheep yards like we've done the few years before. We're expecting around 30 competitors for this year. <laughs> Grouse fun, awesome! I'm Wayne from Hema. This is my first year at the East Eldy event. Hema's sponsored the event now for the last two years. Looking forward to a fantastic family weekend here at LD Station. Now there's been a number of off-road events staged throughout these hills over the years. I first came up here in 1999 to an off-road event and the events traditionally over the years have got tougher and tougher, which unfortunately really means that a lot of people just can't compete. The thing that's unique about this particular challenge here at LD is the fact that the competition has really been set up for people with everyday stock standard four-wheel drive vehicles. And what that means is that basically anyone with a four-wheel drive, even with very limited driving skills, can come up here, compete and have a fantastic time. I reckon this is probably the first event I've ever been to where everybody, like the first place getter to the last place getter, left with a prize. <laughs> the first fun event we ran for the stage was uh, stage one, the Light Force Blind Man's Run, and that was certainly some fun to be seen. I handed all the drivers a blocked off set of goggles. The, the driver just had to listen very carefully and trust their navigator. Some vehicles full of mum and dad and all the kids, some a couple of mates, all sorts of mixes there. And were there some screams and some shouts and some listens to me, lots of hand signals, but in the end, no vehicles got damaged. A couple of very near misses passed a big tree and a few other things, but they all had fun. We had a bit of a variation in time, so some were pretty quick, had their self organised pretty well, some were a little bit slower, and they of course got through without any problems. Didn't have any run off the field, which was good, that would have been maximum penalty, so in the end, a job well done. Bit of power, your way, bit of power. Yeah, this was the first time being sort of actively involved sort of as a marshal in a motorsport event and look, it was just great. It's good to see the, the fun and games everybody's having. Remember that this event here really is a family event and it's brought a lot of people out here. There are a lot of kids around and everybody had some fun. So it was really great to be a part of it and just great to watch people's faces. <laughs> Keep going, straight, straight, quarter turn right, another quarter turn. 
Yeah, give it to her. Come on, juice, 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 stop. Stop. Go backwards. G'day guys, here we are in the beautiful Australian bush, a fantastic remote location. We're within the Great Desert National Park. Now, when we're out making these fantastic shows for you, whether it's your 4x4, four-wheel drive TV, or Simon Christie's four-wheel drive pro tips, we need a lot of power to run our camera gear, our communication gear. So it's important that we keep all of our batteries charged up. And one way of doing that is solar energy. Now, solar can be as complex as you like or as easy as you like. I prefer the simple side of it. And let's have a look at the gear we've got here today. In this well-presented box here, we've got a SolarPod 240. What this basically is, it is a receiver unit for charge from a solar panel. It has a battery inside and an inverter, a cigarette lighter outlet, and two USB ports. So a fantastic, simple and easy unit. You can charge it at home. You can charge it out in the field with your solar panel. Let's see if we can get it connected up to a roller solar unit. Now that is fantastically presented in this bag we have here. We've got a number of items in this bag, but remember, I like to keep things simple. In case we don't have a professionally presented battery like this here, we do have a solar controller, which is important for charging standard batteries. We've got a number of zipper sections because what we've got in here is actually four separate solar panels that can be zipped and then linked electrically together. We have a bag full of various cables and adapters that you'll need. And we have some very professionally presented and laminated instructions. And the center of the bag is actually a large PVC pipe which helps you to roll up the solar panels when you're done and protects them whilst you're storing them. Taking the four solar panels out, you can see some of the interconnecting cables there. And they also help to get the panels securely rolled up when they're in storage. Quite simply unplug them. You've got that strap there to unhook, and it's an easy case of rolling out the panels carefully. Now the great thing about these flexible roller solar panels is that you can lay them over a tent, you can strap them to a car, you can peg them out on the ground, you can actually extend them from a tent down to the ground. You wanna get them ample sunlight, and because you've got four panels that you can link, they're very adaptive and easy to use. Now for the purposes of what we're gonna to do today, especially working with the Solar Pod 240, we're actually only gonna need two panels. Let's get two out and get them linked up. Simply gang the two panels together. And to create the circuit, we'll use one of the wire adapters and that will then plug directly into our Solar Pod 240. Within the Solar Pod 240 kit, we've got the adapter cable we need here. And before we turn the Solar Pod 240 on, you never want to load up a solar panel without having everything switched off. Straight into the DC in and straight away the charge light comes on. You can see it here with the indicator here how much sunlight and how much charge is accepting. And whilst we did charge this previously at home, it's got full power, that will continue to charge whilst we use the SolarPod 240 for charging our batteries. Solar power made nice and easy, just the way I like it. Holden's toughest 4x4 ever has arrived. Introducing the all-new Holden Colorado 7. It comes with seven seats as standard and it's loaded with serious off-road grunt. You'll get three-ton towing and the awesome 470 newton meter Duramax diesel engine, plus an impressive weighting depth and hill descent control, all for the hardcore adventurer. The all-new Holden Colorado 7 is here. Take it off-road at your Holden dealer today. Finally, the driving light you've always wanted is here, boasting a class-leading free-form reflector and a super-tough polycarbonate lens and ABS housing. The all-new Nava Ultimate 225 is a revolutionary driving light, available in halogen, halogen blue and HID, in both spread and pencil beams, and supplied complete with a plug-and-play wiring harness and polycarbonate lens protectors. These Aussie Outback Tough Lights outshine the competition. Visit nava.com.au for more information and make the switch to the brightest lights in town. Total recovery and extraction device, TREAD. Whether it's sand, mud, snow, rocks or any tough terrain, TREAD is the ultimate all-in-one recovery device. Designed and manufactured in Australia for rugged performance, TREAD will let you explore with confidence. Available in a variety of colours and two easy to use sizes, TREAD is the true Aussie traction board you've been waiting for. For more information, visit meanmother.com.au.
viewers, today we're doing some work on my new Colorado 7. Now we've been out testing it on a few tracks. We've got some modifications already done to it. We've got an ARB bull bar, some Narva driving lights, we've got the Mickey Thompson 32 inch tyres, and we've also got some test suspension under the vehicle. Both the tyres and the suspension have raised the vehicle considerably. Now from the factory, this LTZ model comes with 231 millimetres of ground clearance. And comparing that to another four wheel drive, the latest Prado has 220 millimetres. So it's not bad for clearance from factory. Now bull bar up front certainly gives us a better approach angle and a KMR rear bar on the back will give us a better departure angle. But for ramp over angle, we want to improve the clearance of the sills here. Now the factory steps hang down quite low. So today, to improve our ramp over, I'm going to remove the factory steps. Now the car's not so high that it'll make it difficult to get in and out of the car. We can still get in and out nice and easily. But removing the side steps will certainly give us some more clearance in this sill area. And I've got some tools on hand that'll certainly make the job a lot easier. We've got a socket driver. And using the same battery system, an LED torch. Let's get into it. Let's measure the sill clearance that we've got now at the centre of the two doors. And that's 36 centimetres. Let's see if we can improve on that. We're going to start by taking the step off itself and then we can easily remove the mounting brackets. To get them started with this sort of driver, simply turn it on, start turning in the direction that you need to, and then as soon as it loosens up, away you go. With the main bolts removed, it's now a simple case of simply lifting the step out. A little bit fiddly, but there we go. Now already you can see the considerable amount of extra clearance we're going to have here. Let's now get the brackets off. Remember to watch out for dust in your eyes when you're working under any car. Those four-wheel drives are covered in mud, especially underneath. Well, we've certainly opened this sill area up and we have a lot more clearance. Let's measure it and see what we've got. Remember we had 36 centimetres when we first measured it up. We've now got 45 centimetres. So a fairly healthy increase in sill clearance. Now what are the negatives of that? The sill is no longer protected. Not under severe circumstances that those plastic steps would give a lot of protection, but they still were protecting the sills. I think a set of ARB side rails or even some Brown Davis sliders under here might be the go to protect those sills. But all in all, a great improvement. The car looks a lot better and we have improved the sill clearance. Now, of course, before this job is properly finished, we have to do the other side. Now, as you can see, just to confirm, when we're talking about ramp over, that is limited to the clearance of the chassis rails and what is under the vehicle. But it's the angular ramp over that we have definitely improved and we have plenty more clearance here through the sill but definitely need to get some sill rails on to protect the vehicle. Three, two, one, go. The great thing about this event is we get to participate in some of the events. The first event I participated in over the weekend was the Voyager Creek Carver. In that event, we had a series of poles creating a slalom course in the creek. It's quite hilarious. Is that a world record? <laughs> Someone to just be straight out the gate and try to rush the course. Others took the slow and steady approach and had a lot of fun along the way. The way Simon and Denny set the course, they made it a bit difficult by the spacing between the slow and pace. In some cases, couldn't get straight around the pace, you had to reverse, even do a three point turn just to get around some of the posts. The way the events are run on the Saturday mornings, the teams are split up into groups. As each group completes each stage, they then move on to the next stage. This keeps a constant flow of vehicles into our stage. This minimises the waiting time for the competitors and maximises their driving time. But my wife and me this weekend, it's a great family event and we thoroughly enjoyed running the Voyager Creek Carver Stage. One of the events I ran was the ARB Mini Dakar Challenge and I actually had my daughter helping me with that as well. That was a cracking stage actually. It was basically set up in the creek bed. People had to drive through a bit of scrub, a couple of tight turns in there, across the creek bed, up the bank on the other side and then back in and through some more scrub and a big variety in times. I think we had everyone, you know, we had a few people over three minutes, some people doing it a little over a minute. 
Another of one of this event's great achievements is that it's really open to all sorts of vehicles. We've seen Mitsubishi Challengers, Prados, Land Cruiser 200 Series, Land Rovers, Jeeps, all competing in this event. Some of the vehicles were pretty standard, right down to their tyres, whereas probably most of them sort of had a few accessories on them. But I mean, everyone went very well. All the courses I participated in and marshalled that, everyone got through them fine without any dramas whatsoever. This morning we're running the Kmart Paddy Mallon Challenge down here in the creek bed and once again Simon and the boys have set out an amazing course for the competitors. This time the driver's actually getting more involved and he's actually got to grab a Paddy Mallon as well. Last year we had pregnant ladies hanging out of a car, this year those people are back again and the kids are safely strapped in the back of their vehicle having an exciting time around the Paddy Mallon Challenge. This year we also had a tyre off in the Paddy Mellon Challenge. Oh. All the action was happening. Oh, Dad, we even had a bogging as well. But we did a quick recovery and we we're back on course for a fantastic day. This year at the Paddy Mellon Challenge we had three actual targets that people had to get on top of. So there was the, the high ones, the low ones, the drivers had to remove one as well. And then we had the exciting finish at the end oh. where they had to stop through the gate there and try and get those Paddy Mellons in. Stage 5, the Tread 4x4 recovery stage, was run by William, the son of the property owners. One of the most loathed stages, but still the funniest. This stage saw the navigators, kids or assistants out of the vehicle and running for almost the entire stage. At three points along the course, competitors were required to perform a compulsory pretend self-recovery using the Tread 4x4 traction boards. Soft sand, the dusty air, and speeding drivers left the recovery agents well out of breath and gasping for air as they leapt back into the passenger seat at the finish gate. A fantastic stage, this typifies the spirit of the ARB Aldi Easter event. Well, there's three things to be checking with a clutch. Probably at first comes down to how does the pedal feel? If the pedal is taking up very, very quickly just short off the floor, it may need some adjustment. Again, probably let your expert mechanic have a look at that. Simple one with the adjustment is also when you let the foot off, if the clutch takes up right at the last bit, that's probably a bit of a sign that it's got not much clamp loading left. So it might even be slipping. Second point would be probably actually slippage. So if you're driving along up a hill and you accelerate sort of hard in fourth or a fifth gear, if you notice the taco is sort of accelerating up, maybe a little bit like an automatic, and the speedo is not actually picking up, you've definitely got the clutch slipping. So it's probably time to go and see your mechanic at that point, because that's getting already dangerous. Third point is noise. If you're depressing the pedal or you're releasing the pedal, you hear some sort of an unusual noise. It may be the clutch release bearing or something even within the clutch itself. So again, there's some signs to get your mechanic to have a look at, because you do need a little bit of skill to diagnose it. While we're talking about clutches, I've just installed a new four-terrain clutch in my Nissan Patrol. We came back from the Simpson Desert. It had been slipping a little bit, I think, just towards the end on the Simpson Desert. But on um, this latest trip, it's been great. It's sort of based on a racing clutch. It's segmented on one side and a full plate on the other. The pedal feel is actually quite amazing. It really does come down to good design. It's extremely light, but when it bites in, it really takes up. It takes up smooth, but very, very firm. So they're a great clutch to think about. Get your head in. The next generation of shock absorbers is here. Leading the way in 4x4 suspension development, Old Man Emu introduces the most advanced and finely tuned shock absorber on the market. Nitro Charger Sport incorporates a new valving system that instantly adapts to all terrain for an outstanding smooth ride and phenomenal control. Backed by a three year 60,000 kilometer warranty, you can trust Nitro Charger Sport, built in Australia for Australian conditions. Do you need more from your four-wheel drive suspension? Designed for Aussie conditions, Superior Engineering has a suspension solution to suit any four-wheel drive. Mix and match from the widest range of specialty suspension components or opt for the latest in spring and dampening technologies. 
Throw in the widest range of 4x4 suspension accessories and Superior Engineering is your complete 4x4 and suspension specialist. Superior Engineering, it's engineered to be superior. For more information, visit superiorengineering.com.au Warning, water in fuel is one of the biggest killers of diesel engines. But there is now a unique alarm system available that lets you know when there are dangerous water levels in your fuel system. WaterWatch is a simple and effective fuel alarm that offers LED and audible warning signals. Easily fitted, WaterWatch is inexpensive insurance for your vehicle. Avoid huge repair costs, ensure your motor runs clean and be warned of any water issues with the innovative WaterWatch. For more information, visit waterinddiesel.com.au Hi, my name's Ash, and this is my rig. That's 2011 Volkswagen Amarok trendline. List of mods we've done to it are ARB, bar, winch, canopy, a few other mods. Brown Davis have been very good in giving me a fuel tank and underguards for it, and they're fantastic. List of mods we want to do, probably a Kmart rear bar, and after this great weekend at LD here, we'll probably end up doing that and, and going and seeing them fairly shortly. We love it. We use the vehicle up at Tullarook, Nuji, and up in the Victorian high country. I'm also a hunter and we do a lot of hunting up past Canago and we go after some deer sometimes too. Trips we want to do in the future, we're going to do corner country in September this year and then we hope to do Simpson Desert and probably the Flinders Ranges early next year. If you'd like to join us for our next Your Rig trip, then email myself with your details. Each weekly winner takes home a cap and stubby holder courtesy of all sat phones. A pair of scissors, thanks to Keesler Knives. A promo pack courtesy of ARB, including Forby the plush toy. A travel mug, the latest ARB cap, the latest ARB jacket, and a set of valve caps to bling your rig. There's an ARB Penrith stubby holder, a Manel Motors stubby holder, a U-Fixit tyre ratchet set. There's a copy of Dirt Cop magazine and Wild Deer and Hunting Adventures magazine. A set of the Australian designed expander pegs. A stubby of Bundaberg ginger beer. An up and go breakfast replacement courtesy of Sanitarium. A pen and cap thanks to Berrima Diesel and DP Chip. A set of four wheel drive TV medium stickers. And it's all neatly packaged up in an ARB cargo gear carry bag. I'd like to thank Simon and Miranda for organising the Your Rig segment and all the sponsors, ARB and everybody else that are involved. We've had a great weekend at Eldy. It's a great family event for everybody. The sponsors and everybody have been fantastic and the way it's been organised and run is absolutely awesome for a family here. It is very kid friendly. My daughter's had an absolute ball and it is just a great weekend. You need to come and enjoy it and it is just fantastic. Special Stage 6 was run by the property owner himself, Stephen Schmidt, and was the Donaldson back and forth. Another specialty stage set by myself, with more than one twist and a new stage for 2013. This seemingly easy run up and down a bunted section of the creek saw team selecting reverse in a series of tightly set angled boxes in order to back through gates and proceed forward. A two-point turn within bunted boxes at the furthest most point of the course had the teams pointing in the opposite direction and retracing the same course back to the start-finish box. Stage 6 was the final stage for Saturday morning and once completed, competitors were able to head back for a quick lunch before starting the Saturday afternoon stages. My second stage for the day was the DP Chip Chippies Diesel Power Scrub Run. So just before lunch finished, snuck down there, we had to hide about an unknown number of chippies that I only knew out in that scrub there. We had some tucked down in some tins, some with some beer cans, some up in the trees, and everything was all set Three, for the stage. Two, so as soon as lunch one, was finished, and we heard Simon finish giving out commands to everybody, down they came. Off they went, it was a timed run, they had to get round as quick as they could without missing chippies. If they missed chippies, then they started to get some penalties. So again, great family event, car full of kids in the back, mum and dad in the front, everybody watching. 
I don't know whether that helped though because we had more chippies that actually were out there in some of the counts. So I guess everybody counting probably just gave too much of a number. They all came to the end of it and that was great. So looking forward to later on in the day when it's presentation time, I think all those kids deserve a couple of chippies. Does that mean, turn the camera off. Yeah. <laughs> no, we want it recorded. We want it back. The second stage I was running on the Saturday was the Manel Motors Stump Up. We ran it a little bit differently this year to previous years. The drivers had to get their front left wheel up onto the stump and then drive forward and get the rear left wheel. One of the most important driving characteristics of four-wheel driving is knowing exactly where your wheels are. It's one of those things that takes a while to master and it's quite fun actually watching people. A variety of different skill levels there. I mean, some people just drove straight up there first time and you know, a few other people had to take a few attempts at it. But I mean, that's all part of the fun. So again, it was a fun thing to watch and see people's uh, frustrations in some cases at uh, trying to get their wheels up there. The 360 gearbox and diff's mechanical challenge was probably one of our longest challenges, but people had to assemble a gearbox, and the parts were already laid out for them on the table. There was times ranging from six minutes to the winner who actually did it in one minute and 50 seconds through sheer teamwork and just working together and good communication skills. Fantastic little challenge and another new challenge here at the LD Easter event. Good little challenge, having to use some spanners and some hand wrenches. The best part was is the mechanics that thought they would do it in no time. They were some of the longest people that took their while. But it was overall a fantastic little episode and a great stage for the 360 gearbox challenge. The Riverland Challenge, South Australia's hottest 4x4 event, is locked in for the final weekend of October. For an amazing weekend of camping, socialising and 4x4 motorsport action, don't miss the high-flying Riverland 4x4 Challenge October 26th and 27th at the Loveday 4x4 Adventure Park near Barmera in South Australia. Next week on 4 Drive TV, we complete our coverage of the ARB LD Easter event and we look at compressed air systems, tyre pressures and a new diesel fuel additive. I'm Simon Christie. Tread lightly, keep it safe, play hard. I look forward to your company next week.